Ah, beautiful. I have a working handbrake. So since I started this project, it's one of the most common questions to ask is how you're going to get the handbrake to work. The original bus used a drum system on the back of the transmission. And now I've solved it with a disc brake on the transmission. Check out the video. Pretty excited. This uh, thing of beauty came back from the machine shop. So they machined up this plate. This is a bought Ivan off eBay. This is an old slip yoke. And there's a complicated attachment, which I'll go through later. So I've got to pull out this mini drive shaft and the center bearing and start to see how it fits and then finish this bracket up and get the handbrake happening. Okay, so I have been thinking about the handbrake system for a year since I bought the bus pretty much because I knew it was a, an issue when you're doing the engine swaps of them. Uh, I must have investigated and priced all the options. Um, there are three, three main options. They are changing out the rear diff and finding a rear axle with handbrake components on it that have Toyota hubs. Building one of those was looking around the five or six thousand dollar mark, which seemed ridiculous considering I paid twelve hundred for the bus, five hundred for the motor. The second really common common or other option is a pinion um, brake. The pinion comes out of the differential, so keeping the Toyota diff, uh, you have to make a custom pinion shaft and build a uh, frame around the uh, diff housing, you have to drill into the foot veins of the diff. And one engineer said, don't do that, but another one said, you can. So that was possibly my second choice. And the third, which I've gone for, is a transmission brake, as it originally had a transmission brake, uh, had a drum brake. Uh, by the way, drum brakes are actually better than disc brakes for hand brakes. Uh, their biting forces or what have you are, are much better, in more surface area, I guess. But anyway, um, it's hard to get a, a, um, a new drum brake. Um, you could potentially uh, reuse the Toyota one. That's, that's what that was an option. Um, but I found the Willwood. Uh, handbrake system. Now my engineer I spoke to said it had to be mechanically driven with a cable and not hydraulic and certainly had to be separate from the other braking systems. Um, I was pricing up new uh, slip shafts for the, the BTR transmission, the Ford. Uh, one price came in at a thousand dollars just for the uh, custom um, shaft with a flat face. Um, and that's that's really expensive. Um, and then I was just going through my junk pile. I had um, parts from various um, AUs and BA utes, and I found um, uh, a slip yoke that had a good inch shoulder on it. I thought, hmm, I can use that. So I drew up um, this. Now I was experimenting with uh, either splining um, this and I ended up just going with a single uh, notched, uh, what do you call it, a um, slot and with a slot and a pin, um, though I spoke to the local machine shop and we did a thread with a slot, so double. So the disc is threaded on and then it's pinned in place with a, um, a dowel, a metal dowel, and then locked into place with a collet and um, the, those toothed tab to hold it all in place. So a little bit of a preview. So um, someone actually gave me this and just by random then gave it to me. It's been very handy to um, work out things on the bench rather than being under the car. Use center bearing in place. 
Um, so this end cap has a spline on here, which is the original Toyota one, and they joined this section and put a BA forward yoke on it. So that's all working. Um, yeah, so I reversed this so this is sitting further back. And this new um, center bearing has a slotted section here, so that's got good 15 mil adjustment there. So fingers crossed, huh? Let's we'll take the uh, that off and take it to the bus. See what happens. Well, I um put that one the wrong way around, didn't I? I'll fix that. Well, this must be my working rough. <laughs> Um, I found out I couldn't have it completely uh, at nine o'clock because there wasn't enough material down here. So it wasn't high enough. So I put it sort of at 45, uh, maybe 55, um, up here. And I had to weld this on. Now, of course, now that I've done this i don't think i needed to cut this out but anyway i'm going to just plonk it in the car and see what happens car bus okay i think we're getting somewhere uh you know all these big bolts it's the only unf bolts i had they'll be sitting in there um I just noticed that this is sitting on this, which it shouldn't be. It should be free floating. So it's hard mounted to that bit. And underneath there is the um, bushing. So that's probably causing some extra vibration. And actually the trans is sitting on that point. It's kind of pushing this back a bit. But anyway, um, that needs to be tightened up and that'll be fine. So I had to make some adjustments so it was just touching the brake pad on that point there. So I better take up another few mil there to make sure it doesn't touch. If it touched, I'm going to make a horrendous noise if I applied while moving. Um, yeah, I'll just take that off. This is just a, a rough. I'm going to make this properly, use these measurements to make some plates. Because I'd like to um, have that filled in again and have the two holes to mount onto the actual nose cone. Um, but anyway, almost there. Um, my first test run was not too good. Um, I had to really adjust the brake up close to get enough leverage um, and it wouldn't release properly so I got a bit of overheated brakes because there's smoke. Uh, quickly fixed that up, stopped it, unreleased it and drove back. Uh, I realised at the front I hadn't spaced out the this piece here, the hole's far too big to match the cable hole. So I've made these two little aluminium spaces. I really should have a shoulder bolt in there with a good flat surface to grip onto. Um, also I need to find a spring. It's supposed to be a spring, I think that's what it's back. So let's try it again. So I got a um, professionally custom made handbrake cable uh, from the Flexible Drive, the same guys who did my transmission uh, selector. Uh, very good, very helpful. Uh, I had some issues with the end pieces. Um, Got to be very careful about the amount of stroke you need, etc. I lost the original bolt here, which is 
a bit annoying because it's got multiple steps or thicknesses on it. Uh, I can't see it, but I've actually machined this random thing I had lying around to make it work. It's all very nice and tight and working well. There's meant to be a spring we also have lost uh, to return it. But um, you can't use the original brake cable because the engine and transmission are quite a bit longer than the original ones. Uh, it didn't quite reach the calipers. Well, that was stupid. I was being lazy and I just had a couple of bolts holding the disc on. And I was hard testing the handbrake. And it shows the handbrake works. It sheared those completely off. So, yeah. My replacement disc, uh, just six mil bolts. Now this goes over, has the keyway, this is keyway, there, and this is all press fit, so it's pretty hard to move. That goes on there, somehow. It's the first time I've done this, so, uh, yeah, I've got to um, Get it past that. Which the keyway not all the way down. That makes it a bit harder. Can just thread it on. Alright, so I've got to bend that tab. You can see it over the keyway. And this slide sticks on and threads on, and these tabs pull up. There you go, so I have to hammer that over the thread. And it's locked in with the key. It's a perfectly tight fit. You can't go anywhere now. Um, all the bolts are in. Probably should lock tight them. Let's put it back in. Just having one bolt here, you can lift that up off the rotor. Uh, that back in place. Bolt up my shaft again, put the caliper back down, and take two. Okay, we're back together. Um, I didn't changed the adjustment on this since I last used it. It only moves 5 mil, but I can turn this by hand. They are rubbing, as they should, but sometimes it's not heavy force on it. It should be fine. All right, Let's see how it goes. I try to find the steepest hill around here. Um, hills never look steep on video, but it's the steepest hill in Castlemaine. Well, not the steepest, but a steep hill. Handbrake works absolutely perfectly. Um, been driving around a fair bit. The engine's getting a bit warm, so I might have to work on a better cooling system. Something a bit bigger, maybe, or an extra fan, extra radiator. Um, Yeah, anyway, handbrake is a success. So as I said before, the, um, the handbrake bracket is still just a, a, a testing rig. I will get that made properly with some plasma cut pieces and welded up properly. Instead of using some of the, uh, it's a scrap I've got around here. It's the, uh, the landlord's yard art. I, it's very handy, but uh, yeah, I've got to make it properly. Uh, there has to be engineered, so that's probably a few months away still. 
I'm pretty confident that it will pass. Uh, it works great. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you informed. Uh, next step is to finish the seating brackets. Um, I've put the uh, Volvo seat uh, belts in, which are working well. Uh, rebuild the uh, engine bay cover and do some soundproofing there to make it quiet. Um, what else? I'll then start the fit out. Anyway, the project's still going. Um, thanks for watching. I almost forgot, I made these a few months ago. They are professional solid zinc chrome plated badges. Uh, you can buy them from my store. See the link below.